Hello everyone, welcome back. Coach Fury here, and today we're going to be getting straight back into my online multiplayer Let's Play for Wolverine Studios Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2016. For those of you who haven't checked out the first episode, go back, have a look. Um, this is slightly different to a, a normal traditional Let's Play in the fact that I'm going to be playing an online league competing against other human general managers. So, what we've been up to since uh, the first episode, not a great deal in terms of uh, competitions, in terms of games. Um, I think I touched on last time that we were up against number two Louisville in this uh, next coming week or so. Um, and I said it would be a real interesting test for our, our roster here at St. John's just to see whether we can compete with some of the very best in college basketball. As you can probably see by the scoreline there, we, we didn't compete at all. Um, so let's have a little look at the box score. So, yeah, I mean, I had a look at this earlier and obviously we didn't play very well at all. I mean, look at that shooting percentage, under 25% is just terrible. And, I mean, if you look at our actual starters that um, began the game, um, Kurt Brown only lasted eight minutes there. Um, not particularly great. Um, Terence Cook, Jim Claggett, Ben Sills, n none of them got a single shot off. Which is which is terrible, and just shows how strong um, some of the the best college teams are in this game and in this league. Really, um, only Ek Augustine, you know, the, the guy I said at the very beginning was going to be essential for us to have any form of uh, success this year. Um, performed admirably, considering the rest of the, the the lineup performed pretty terrible. And looking across, I mean, nothing else really stood out. I mean. If you look at the the numbers in comparison, if you look across the board, I mean, they obviously shot fairly well. Um, they out rebounded us, um, not by a great deal, to be honest with you. We didn't we didn't get too badly into foul trouble. Um, the turnovers may have killed us a little bit, um, but I mean, I think it just shows the gap really, and, and what we're going to have to do um, to turn St John's into uh, one of the top college teams really over the next few years, hopefully. Um, you can see there. I mean, they had a lead of 31 during the game. Uh, we didn't. We didn't give them too many fast break points, which is promising to see. I mean, we did make them work for for their points, but I mean, you know, looking at that, I mean, Corey Hendrick for for Louisville um, was was fantastic. Um, 25 points, 10 rebounds, a block, and a couple of steals is is fantastic for a card. I mean, double double from rebounds and points is is uh, really interesting. So there's still a long way for us to go, really, in terms of um, competing with some of the very best. But it, it was an interesting test. Um, the thing that uh, disappointed me the most was probably our, our inability to shoot the ball. Um, I felt that the uh, the strategies that we've, we we employed and um, we we decided to use from the first episode around the triangle offense and the the Princeton offense with uh, some simple defense, um, I thought would would you know, at least keep us competitive against some of the very best teams. Um but obviously that, that wasn't that wasn't the case. Um just noticed there the, the location for Louisville, the KFC Yum Centre. That's that's an interesting one. Um I'm not sure if that's an actual arena or not, but perhaps one of you guys could tell me in the comments because I'd be interested I'm gonna look that up after actually and see if it actually is an arena. That's that's a strange name. Maybe it's got a bit of KFC sponsorship there. Um but in terms of other games, we haven't played anything else. We've got one more um, sort of exhibition friendly game against Washington before we kick on and actually uh, start the um, the actual league games, the standing competition. Um, as like I said, we've got Georgetown first, who are going to be a, a real challenge, and then and then Butler and Villanova. Um, so we've got a few tough games to begin with. But uh, if we have a look at what our remind ourselves what our goals were um, to finish top half of the conference. Um, to win 15 plus games, to improve the school, school prestige and to qualify for the NCAA tournament. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Hopefully uh, in the next episode we'll have um, probably be borderline kicking off some of these initial games. But I mean, I'm, I'm, overall I'm pretty positive with how we've, um, we've started the, uh, the, the campaign in the season. Obviously Louisville was a tough one for us, but we've only, apart from that we've only lost one game. Um, you know, we've played some mediocre competition, I would say. So it'll be interesting to see how we do do when we actually kick off the uh, the league games and see whether we are competitive or not, and see if we we do need to make any drastic changes to the lineup. 
Um, I mean, my initial thoughts are, even though um, the likes of Cook, Brown, Claggett and Seals didn't perform very well against Louisville, they, I think they've earned their starting spot to begin with. Um, interestingly, Dan Butler has surprised me. I mean, he, he obviously didn't shoot very well against Louisville, but um, if we dive into the roster and have a quick look at him, he, you know, he's undersized, but he's, he's performed fairly well. He's obviously had a couple of starts for us um, over the, um, the, the games. But he's, he's, you know, looks solid. I mean, he's not a great rebounder, but he is getting some points and shooting fairly well. So it may be that he um, is, is pushing um, Seals and, and, uh, and Claggett for some, some starting rotation minutes there, possibly even a start, you know. Um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, so in terms of other stuff that's been going on, um, let's have a little look. So we've got um, some emails, it looks like. I mean, just to give you a summary of, of some of the things we may may encounter throughout the season, um, you'll notice down the bottom here we've had some weekly incident reports. Um, this was before I took over the team a little while ago. Um, and we, we may have to deal with these as they arise. Um, essentially what they are is, is just when um, the, the players tend to have clashes or personality issues. Um, so we may have to, have to have a couple of phone conversations with them throughout the season. It looks like Kurt Brown... Um, has, has been the, the main causer um, of a couple of things. Um, you can see there early on he's, he's um, you know, been messing around with pretty much everyone in the team. He obviously doesn't like Terence Cook too much. Um, with, there's obviously a bit of competition there. Um, you'd expect that considering they're both um, guards and both been competing for minutes. I've actually put them both in the, in the starting lineup, so you never know, that might help a little bit as well. Um, and it looks like, yeah, only Dan Butler probably having a little bit of an argument with uh, Greg Wynn. Um, but Kurt Brown's probably one we want to keep an eye on to see if he does cause any more issues for us. Um, but, I mean, in terms of other incidents, we haven't had anything else um, since I've sort of been in charge. So I haven't really had to respond to anything in terms of that at the moment. Um, obviously, the other things that you may get are, are scouting reports. Obviously, there's a few, a few here. Um, another incident reminder there looks like. Some different players, it looks like James McCain's decided to get involved as well with some stuff. Um, but if you know, we've got the um, letters of intent that were signed that I touched on in the last episode. Uh, but let's take a look at the uh, the next um, team we're due to face, which is, is Georgetown, who have who have only been five and five, um, but they're they're the favourites for our our, our conference really. Um, they're the one that's going to be probably ranked throughout the season. So let's have a little look. So. Looks like um, what we tend to get with the scouting reports for this is we get a bit of a roster comparison in the starting lineups. Um, it gives you a little indication of, of where the advantages are. So if we take a look at that, so it looks like in the backcourt, Drexler and Brown um, are you know superior to our backcourt of Brown and Cook. Um, we'll see how that goes. It looks like obviously they, they're quite high scoring um, guards. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. Um, that could be a challenge for us. We, we don't press too much though in terms of our strategy. Um, so hopefully we can just limit them in terms of the half court stuff um, if we don't press too much. Obviously our, our star man here, EK Augustine, is, is the superior player to Mr. Ward. Um, and then in the front court, it's a little bit mixed. So it looks like Seals may have the upper hand on Robinson. Um, be interesting because obviously with Seals being a freshman, um, we haven't seen a great deal of, of um, you know, output yet. Um, he does have a great deal of promise, um, as we touched on last time. So maybe you know he if he obviously has the um, the talent advantage, but um, be interested to see how he does against Robinson, who's um, obviously taller and, and bigger than him, um, at six foot nine and two hundred seventy two pounds. Um, so we'll we'll see how that goes. And it looks like in terms of the front court, in terms of the centre positions, Claggett and Sullivan are pretty even. Although I'd probably say, I, I, you know, in terms of Claggett's output, he may be inter may put more pressure on Sullivan, you know, with the extra scoring ability that he, may, he clearly is demonstrating. Um, but it looks like in terms of the way they set up, um, it looks like the, the back court is where they get most of their points and the front court is just there to, to hold and box out a lot. Um, interestingly, it's, it seems to say that the uh, the bench for, for Georgetown has the advantage Um to me, it looks fairly even. I mean, it looks like our, our um, bench scores more points, um, doesn't assist as much, doesn't get us too many rebounds, but the blocks are pretty even. So um, maybe a slight advantage to them in the fact that they 
they have they might be able to um, to make a few more things happen. But we have um, sort of demonstrated a higher scoring bench, so um, we'll see how that goes. What's interesting about scout reports as well is you, you get sort of overviews of of who the best player is, some offense and defense styles. So we can see whether we can try and counteract that. Um, so the best player is Brian Brown, which is no surprise. Um, their backcourt player is, is you know the highest scoring player. Um, looks like he's, he's got some interesting skill sets in the fact that he you know he's getting one point three blocks for a guard at six foot one is is fantastic. So obviously a very athletic player. So we'll have to watch on him. Um, Cook could have his hands full because you know as we we know Cook isn't a great defender. So we'll see how that goes. In terms of their offensive style. Um, it looks like they run a slow-paced offense um, with some freedom. So it looks like they don't have too much of a, a set in terms of how they play. It looks like they play with, I'm guessing from that, some some basic sets. Um, they probably run a lot of motion, I'm guessing, then by, by this, in the fact that they run a bit of a balanced attack, um, a bit of flex offense. But I, you know, with some freedom in the basket, suggests that they play a bit of motion, which which makes sense considering their point guard is their best player. So. And they probably make it quite free for him to do whatever he wants, really. In the defense, it looks like they're very much a half court team, um, man to man, you know, with occasional full court man to man. It looks like they're not going to play a great deal of zone against us, um, which which may be interesting. Um, be interesting how we cope with that. Um, obviously, we'll run a lot of um, triangle offense, and hopefully, we'll we'll make something happen with that. We don't have any player scouting reports yet. It's probably where it's too far away um, to begin with at the moment because um, we've got a game before this one, so we'll probably get a bit more detail then. Um, so we'll see we'll see how that goes. Um, in terms of who we're, we're up against next, it's, it's Washington. So let's see if we've got a scout report for them, see if we've got any more detail. Um, I don't know, it doesn't look like we've got anything in the player scout report. It may be due because um, our guy who's doing our scouting, if I remember rightly, he's, he's not a great scout, only 37. So... Perhaps we don't get that detail because, you know, he's not a great scout. He, he can't go to that detail. And perhaps it, it may be a case of thinking about when we when we do look to try and match up against some of the better teams and we don't have that. Maybe that is our disadvantage and we might want to, to look about um, possibly bringing in a, a better assistant or a better person at scouting. Um, but for now, we'll, we'll leave it how it is. In terms of other emails... Um, as I sort of said, you don't only get the scouting reports, and um, we get letters of intent, and we'll get some incidents probably throughout the season. But there's there's nothing really for us to deal with yet. Um, we'll, you know, we'll touch on perhaps Butler and some of the other games later on, and we'll see how we do. But obviously, Georgetown's the next one we've got in terms of our our actual opening league game. So that was the one that I wanted to have a quick look at. Um, in terms of the polls, um, what's interesting is we've we've jumped massively up the RPI rankings. Um, I think we were around 50 something last time and we've jumped to 37 now um, which is interesting because we've lost the game and actually managed to jump up the poles it, it kind of probably shows you how um, how hit and miss these poles are um, I mean you can, you can see here I mean similar kinds of things I mean Louisville who we played last ranked number one coaches poll in the media poll they're ranked number two so I mean I'm not too worried about our loss against them um, but hopefully, you know, if we can win a couple of opening games, um, hopefully we can push up into, you know, the top 25, which would be fantastic for our first season. But, you know, this, this obviously plays a factor in terms of whether we might get into the NCAA conference um, finals and the championship, as well as our actual standings. Um, so if we um, if take a look at some of the, uh, the actual articles that have been coming out, um, we can have a little look at the awards. Um, so we'll look. We won't bother looking at um, conf, you know, entire association because there's just so many awards. Um, but I mean, we haven't had anyone um, who's been awarded any um, you know players of the week yet. Um, so it looks like Jason Augustine from Creighton's had quite a few um, to begin with. Um, so you know, it just gives you a sense of who we might want to have a look at when we're playing teams. Um, but if we take a look at the Norton Watch, um, which is just a nice little graphic here, but I mean this is the interesting one. So this is obviously awarded to um, to players who are um, outstanding athletes and also very good academically. So 
you know the the perfect student athlete typically is is seen to try and win this. Um, you know, it looks like we've got no one there who's in our conference, which is which is good. <laughs> it means we don't have to play against them, which is always promising. Um, for me, I mean, I, I'm a Michigan fan um, in in real life, so I'd, I'd like to see Brad Daly um, try and jump up the rankings. But um, you know, looks like they're all very good players in terms of their their output um, in, with some good college teams as well. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that throughout the season and see whether that changes. Um, looks like Charles uh, Thomas is, is sort of the number one at the moment, um, which is understandable considering he's he's got some good stats there, some high point I- points per game, some good rebounds, assists, and well, it looks like he's finished stat board across there actually, so which is interesting. So if we take a look at some of the other things which may be a bit more relevant to us, so if we look in the association meter, um, we'll get some basic headlines here in terms of what's going on. I mean, this generally just gives you stats of like where people have been performing fairly well but if we take a look at the um the actual season preview let's let's take a look at some of the top teams um, who are expected to to be in in sort of the the, the running for a the finals and to win the actual t- ncaa tournament um looks like the number one that was orig- initially ranked was the Con- connecticut huskies um then we've obviously got louisville we played recently um Looks like in North Carolina. I mean, it's the usual suspects, really. Um, UCLA, uh, Oklahoma, Kentucky, Michigan, Maryland, um, Oklahoma again, um, Syracuse, you know, Kansas. You know, th- these these should be familiar to anyone who, who watches any college basketball. You know, these are the um, the general top uh, top college teams. Um, so we'll, we'll keep an eye out throughout the season and see how they're going. Obviously, there's no stats at the moment because none of the actual um, conference games have kicked off yet. But um, be interested to see if any, you know, any of these players sort of start to stand out as we go through. Um, in terms of what we've seen so far, obviously um, Corey Hendrick was was fantastic against us, so we'll, we can keep an eye on him and see how he goes. Um, there's not a great deal to comment on here. Um, unfortunately, the season preview um, I had a look earlier, it, it doesn't work at the moment. Um, keeps keeps chucking me out of the game when that goes, so we, we won't click on that and have a look at that. Um, so, I mean, in terms of the the roster, um, you know, like I said, I'm not going to change anything. I'm probably going to keep the, um, the the matrix sub matrix the same. And um, we haven't got any any injuries yet, which is which is good. So we're going to hopefully go in healthy to our to our opening games. Um, the strategy I think has been working, um, so I'm not going to tweak that at all. To be honest with you. Um, obviously, we we were terrible against Louisville, but I'll, I'll let that one slide as a one-off. You know, playing a, a good conference, um, a good team in in uh, in the college basketball scene. So, um, you know, I'll let that one go. Um, so, I guess in terms of other things that are going on, um, I mean, I, I have like I sort of touched on the staff stuff hasn't changed. Um, we may look to do that throughout the season, but let's let's take a look at the um, actual leaderboard. Um, and players so it looks like if we look across the entire association it looks like Alex Brown is, is, is leading the uh, leading the uh, the entire you know entire association with um, with the points per game but let's just let's just keep it focused on our conference and see see how we, our players have been doing so you know Kevin Hayes is obviously um, you know scoring the most points in, in our conference but which, which is good to see is that um, E.K. Augustine and, and Jim Cleggett are you know in the top 15 so we've got some point scorers which is great uh, if we look at the assists you know Cook and Brown are uh, sort of up there in sort of the top bordering the top 10 you could argue they're in the top 10 because obviously they're joint with Brian Willis who's who's up there which is good I mean I don't think either of them are a natural um, sort of pass first point guards in the fact that you know they don't have outstanding passing and handling skills you know they can both hand the ball but you know we're not going to rely on them too much to to make things happen we're going to hopefully um, concentrate on on our strategy that will win us some games so looking at sort of the rebound and this is where I think we are weakest and you know it's it's going to hopefully show when we look at um, some of the uh, you know just our conference so Jim Clegg is up there but he's, he's not a great rebounder. Seals looks like he's, you know, 
we haven't got any great rebounders in the post, uh, which is a worrying thing. Which you'll notice that um, when we look at my actual, um, we go to it here. No, it's, where is it? It's in my. Where is it? I've got to find my where it is. Ah, it's up here. So when we look at my actual strategy that we've set, I mean, I've, I've focused heavily on crashing boards on offense and defense because I know we're not a good rebounding team, so we're not naturally going to grab that many rebounds. So we've got to make sure that we've got bodies in there to actually um, to grab them. So jumping back to the leaders, uh, if we look at blocks per game as well in our um, conference, so again, we, you know, we, I think this, you know things like blocks per game and steals per game um, are very much based on on strategy as well as the, the player's ability to grab steals and blocks, but. Interestingly, it looks like some of our front court are fairly good at stealing the ball, um, which is which is great to see. Um, we, you know, we haven't got any great blockers, so we you know we we can't um, play too much zone and expect our our front court guys to get in there and actually make make plays for us. So um, I think our strategy is pretty well set in terms of defense in the fact that we're um, playing a lot of man, just a lot of basic man some basic zone and not doing any real pressure defense of such just focusing on one type um, so we'll, we'll see how that that progresses as well but I think that's the, the sort of strategy we're going to stick with um, for the opening few games um, and see how we see how we get on with that so I mean in terms of actual team statistics I think I may have touched on this last time but if we look at just again just in our conference um, you'll see that in terms of if we go to advanced stats because you know the regular stats show us a bit but they don't show us a great deal if we look at the actual um, advanced stats you know we we're sort of in the middle here I mean if I sort of just highlight where we are I mean we're not a great offensive team um, or a great defensive team to be honest with you we're, we're pretty much middle so um, going, if we look at that sort of our, our team goals again which is to finish in that top half it based on some of the stats that we've sort of been doing against um, some competitions for these sort of exhibition games to begin with and um, we're very much in the middle um, you know you could probably argue that we're just inside the top five um, you know looking at some of these ratings um, but which which is good because I think you know if we look at this I mean I think for me Georgetown are going to be at the top then probably Butler, Xavier and DePaul obviously would be just below them I think. And for us I like to th I like to think that we will you know we'll be above some of these guys. Um you know, Providence, Creighton, Marquette, Vinova, Satan Hall. I, I like the fact that um, based on some of the stats and how we've been playing that we, we should hopefully be above them, which is which is really promising to see. Um, whether that is reflective obviously you know strength of competition plays a massive part in in the friendly matches and sort of the, the, the you know your schedule you can set up whoever you want to play um, they may have had some really tough opponents um, whereas we, we've had a bit of a mixture so that, that might that might take a factor uh, when, when we actually start kicking off the, uh, the standing games but um, like I said there's there's not a great deal to sort of um, touch up on um, at the moment so I think what I'll do is I'll leave it there guys feel free to chuck your comments in do you think that we're going with the right strategy um, just leaving as is seeing how we get on is there anything that sort of stands out to you that we, we should be doing um, let me know um, but until next week hopefully we'll we'll have um, just entered into the um, the actual standings and conference games and we'll, we'll have a full update from that and see how we're getting on but until next time, guys, um, just have a think about: is the strategy right that we're doing? Have we, you know, should I? Am I being too lenient with the likes of Cook and Brown and um, Claggett and Seals in the fact that they form so badly against Louisville? Or should I be, you know, should I be open to sort of bringing Butler back in? Um, you know, he did all right when he started, but I just, I just felt that he was undersized. He wasn't a great rebounder. Maybe we should be using him in another position, possibly, but. Um, for me, I, I felt that um, Claggett's clearly the better player, and I felt that uh, we needed to find a way to 
to get Seals into the lineup um, because he, he does have some excellent stats um, and he ha is an okay rebounder even though he's undersized. Um, and, you know, obviously we need to see whether, um, you know, whether any of these guys could possibly step up. We may have some injuries, but um, do you think we've got the right um, starting lineup? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that. Um, but until next time, um, keep those thoughts in mind. Post, you know, post them in the comment section. And um, if you want to follow what's going on, hit that subscribe button and um, follow along as we, as we go along each week.